Hello, Internet. Welcome to Garden Sound 365. This is the show where I write music. Let me try that again. My name is Gardner. This is the show where I write music every day for a year. We're going on a little adventure today. Keys. Today's a big day. The project that I've been working on for an entire year is coming to a close today. Let's boogie. So for starters, I know that filming myself while I'm driving is very unsafe. So I'm only going to be doing this at stoplights and on back roads. Also know that it's very weird to see me outside of the house. And, uh, well, I have a life too, so here I am. Um, also, I want to talk about, um, well, first I want to thank everybody for all the support that they've given me. Um, yesterday's video wasn't really supposed to be a cry for help. Like, I think some people saw it. Um, they thought maybe it was a cry for help, maybe I'm, um, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not okay mentally, maybe I'm not where I need to be um, with everything. And you know what? Anybody showing compassion or support is always welcome. And so I want to thank everybody who has been showing me compassion and support, um, who, who might have thought that yesterday was really just a cry for help. Um, I'm good though. I'm, I'm not... Um, I'm, I'm not in a place where I, I'm harm, I'm not gonna harm myself um, and I'm not gonna harm anybody else, so I'm, I'm fine. I think what people saw was the unfiltered frustration that I wanted to show everybody. Um, this show really isn't, there's no filter on this show. I don't, I don't start the camera and then cut the camera a whole bunch. I start the camera and I talk. And I, my goal is to capture my actual emotions um, and then pair that with music. The whole idea, the whole start of this project was to show people how inspired and how, how connected my music is to my emotions. And <clears throat> it's always been that way. So, you know, the reason that I have the vlog in the first place is to show people what mental state I am that day and how things are feeling inside my head. And hopefully that they can hear that in the music that gets released that day. Or at least that's the idea. So, in particular, um, I want to thank my sister, Mary Grace, and I want to thank my friend Carl um, for reaching out to me when they did. I had a really long conversation with both of them um, that it really put me in a good place. And thank you to everybody who commented yesterday um, to talk and, and show their support. Um, so that kind of brings up a few things I want to talk about. The conversations I ended up having with people um, brought up some things I want to talk about, but I have to cut the camera now because I'm about to get into traffic. Uh, first off, I want to make it absolutely 100% clear that I'm not bashing popular music. I'm not bashing anybody who's gotten fame from writing a specific type of music. I think that's fine. Um, at, you know, worst case scenario, you're making money doing something that I don't see as worthy of, of that sort of attention. But the problem with that is I'm one person and if millions of people agree that your sound is good and they're listening to you and buying your stuff, I can't fault you for that. You know what I'm saying? That's just good marketing. I also wanna make it clear that I'm not bashing producers who use plugins or tools or um, even producers who use like uh, loops out of a sample pack. Um, I'm not bashing people who use those types of things as tools, and that's what I think they are. I think they're tools. Um, no, not the people. I don't think the people are tools. I think those resources, sample packs, um, loop packs, uh, plugins, I think those are all fantastic tools that can aid you in creating your art. I'm bashing producers who use exclusively sample packs. For instance, oh, here comes traffic. For instance, some producers will download a Cymatics like dubstep pack, and then they'll make, and then they'll they'll make a song that is only using loops that are exclusive from that pack, or they'll use a melody loop from a specific pack, and they'll call it their own song. At that point, you don't get to call that your song. It's not yours. You didn't make that. Does that make sense? It's like, for instance, for instance, Legos. Okay, so if you make a Lego by the instructions. Congratulations, you put a Lego together by the instructions. Um, but you don't get to say that you invented that spaceship. 
Does that make sense? Or really any model kit, you know? Like, what you're, do what you're doing at that point is putting together a model kit. But you don't get to call the final creation your own. You, you own it, as in you bought it, but you don't get to say that you designed it. You know what I'm saying? That's not the way that works. And that's what I mean when I say easy mode producers. Producers who literally just will build these Lego sample packs, th throw them together, and then claim that it's their own artwork. It's not. It's paint by numbers. You didn't design the painting, you just painted the numbers. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about that. Imagine if there was an art gallery where someone hung a bunch of paint by numbers that they did by the books and then tried to call it their own artwork. There'd be outrage for good reason, because that's plagiarism. I also want to talk about what I said when I was talking about shit posting. Um, and some people took that to mean that you shouldn't post content. That's not what I mean. Obviously, I don't mean that because I post content every day. So if I meant don't post content, that would be very hypocritical of me to say that. Not what I meant. There are two things that I hate more than anything else in this world. One of them is hypocrisy, and the other one is lying. I hate liars, and I hate hypocrites. And so, it's really important for me to make sure that it's clear that I desire to be neither of those things with this show. I'm not saying I don't want you to post your content. I'm saying I want you to look at the content you're posting and judge whether or not it's worthy of posting. Isn't to say that I should be the ultimate judge of whether or not you should post anything. No, you should. What I mean by that, don't post anything that's not finished. Don't ever post anything that's unfinished. In fact, Ill Gates, one of the best producers out there, is credited with saying that you should never even press the export button until the track is fully finished. Don't even print an MP3. Don't even export a wave until you feel like your track is finished. So if you are the judge of whether or not something is finished and you think it is finished, by all means, post that. Post that as your art, okay? That's what I'm saying. But don't post works in progress and stuff like that. I mean, in inside of forums, you know, where it's a bunch of producers, and you know, it's like, hey, pro, pro, post your works in progress for feedback, that's different. I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't post your works in progress publicly for everybody to see, and then treat them as if they're finished works of art. That's what bothers me. D -d 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 I hope you see the difference there. I'm not saying to not post your works in progress. I'm just saying don't post your works in progress on public forums as finished artwork. It just doesn't make any sense, but you'd be surprised how many people do it. And all it really does is it waters down the audience's taste for that type of music. It hurts everybody. You can post works in progress where they're supposed to be, you know, on private forums and stuff, but don't fucking post those on Facebook or in the public space where people who aren't producers can see that because what it does is it hurts the brand and hurts the genre. And again, work in progress is different than a preview. And I'm not talking about previews, but maybe that's a whole topic for a different discussion because I'm not a fan of previews either. I also got another comment and I'm gonna paraphrase this, but I'll also post the comment on the video. Um, that was talking about how this has been a problem for, for forever since the music industry has been around. Um, yes, I agree with you, yes and no. I agree that, um, and I said this in my comment, my reply, but I wanted to just put this out in the video so I can show people that I, I read every comment you post. I do, I read them all. Um, because this is a discussion. You know, this, this show is a discussion, and Philip DeFranco says that a lot in his show, and I'm trying to emulate that. We are a discussion. We're a discussion-oriented community. That's the only way you can progress is by talking about things. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It is a problem that has been around since the music industry has been a thing, but I also think that it's been made worse by the age of information. Um, and by that, I mean that it's possible for anybody that wants to to write a track on a MacBook and post it, right? Now, that might be a hypocritical thing to say because at times I have also touted how valuable I think that is. I think the access with which people can get, you know, the, the access you can gain in the information age, the, the access to information to those who need it, to those who want it, who seek it, I think that's beautiful. I think that anybody can be a producer who deserves to be a producer. The problem is, so can people who don't. Does that make sense? And I don't mean don't deserve to do it. I'm not saying that they're not privileged or, or you know not able to, to, to do it. But what I'm saying is people, people who are just trying it out 
have the same ease of access to people who are serious about it. That's the problem. Being a musician, you know, the, the whole romantic idea of going on tour and releasing an album and getting in touch with a studio producer and that sort of thing, it used to be a journey. And it was kind of a wall that would put, you know, that would separate the, and I, I hate using gendered speech like this, but it, it puts the men, you know, it really separated the men from the boys, the men from the boys, not to say that you couldn't be a woman. Um, and it's, uh, but you know what that phrase means, right? It separates the strong from the weak. If you didn't have the willpower and drive to actually go through the trouble of doing all that, you didn't make it. And that's kind of one of the reasons I believe that music has been watered down now. The whole, the whole, there's no longer a vetting process. It's just whoever needs to or wants to can put their stuff out. Now that's perfect for people who wouldn't have been able to make it otherwise. Do you see the distinction I'm drawing there? So it's more access for people who want to do it and deserve to do it but couldn't in the past. So that, in, that, in that respect, it's a good thing. But it's also a bad thing in that it also gives people who don't really need access to that level of shit. I hope this doesn't make me sound old and jaded because I'm trying to avoid becoming that person. It just seems that I get worse and worse the older I get. I don't know. I also want to clarify that there's no way I'm going to ever stop. I said this, I said this is my last straw, and I've said that so many times in the past. There's no way I'm ever going to be able to stop. It's just written into me. You know, it's, it's part of my being. It's part of my identity. I write music. It's what I do. I love doing it. Um, I don't really like much else. And, uh... I can't stop. And now that I've started doing YouTube, I don't think I can stop that either. This is so much fun. It's really addicting. I love talking to you guys. I love this show. And I'm so happy everybody's sticking around. And I'm happy we've got new subscribers. And I hope it continues. Please keep watching. Please keep cl clicking that like button. Please keep subscribing. Please keep telling your friends. I need the encouragement. We're doing a good thing here, you guys. We really are doing a good thing. And as soon as YouTube starts paying me out, we can start getting some charities paid and start funding the show and, and getting it a, getting it even better. And it's, it's just going to go up. That's the thing. This is my low point, you guys. And a lot of people have said this is a professional-looking show. This is, the, this is the least I can do right now because I'm still working my day job. Imagine how, how much better this is going to be in less than a month. So remember how I said this was a very important day and that I'm doing something huge today? You're about to find out. I am in Jonesboro right now going to the, well, I can't give it away. I'm not gonna give it away, you'll, you'll see when we get there. So you can probably guess why we're here. Uh, Octavius. Octavius Gardner. All right. These guys at Atlanta Disc, you do your discs. Buy local, don't go to CD Baby. Call these guys yeah, in the Atlanta area. How do we get in touch with you? Uh, six, seven, eight. 7801722 Boom. I'll put the logo up like right here. Alright man. Bye! <laughs> Together. Are you ready? Oh my god, I'm such a loser. Yep. It's uh it's done. Part one. Part two. Part three. I started this project in February of 2016. Um, because I wanted to write, I hadn't written an album since Totally Nude Full Bar, so it had been about a year and a half, and I wanted to write an album again, but I had so many different ideas and and so many different emotions and directions um, that I couldn't put it all into just uh, one album. So I wrote three, and I'm releasing these as a single album. Uh, in three parts and I think that's pretty cool so I hope you can appreciate it as well that's why they're not all ten bucks a piece they're all seven dollars a piece um, they're not for sale yet they will be on Thursday so I will be putting these up on the website um, I'll be putting them up uh, for individual download and also as a purchase for the limited edition CD the hard copies um, I will be selling them as a three pack um, and the price for that will be set. I haven't set a price for it yet, but I'm going to think about it. And uh, it'll be fair. You know me. But that's also the reason I haven't talked much about part or volume, volume three of Garden Sound 365. I haven't even put it up on the website. And the reason was um, is because this album was coming out and I really wanted to push this um, instead of volume three. But don't worry, volume three will be coming shortly afterward. I'm going to write a happy. 
piano song today. A little piano, a little bit of a hip-hop beat, a little bit of a break beat. Yeah. See you tomorrow.